All right. This meeting is being recorded. All right. So Tiffany Belfield Elmine here, food systems equity organizer. Um, and I'm here with a, a couple of farmers and my coworker, Jennifer Weber, and this wonderful resource, Ms. Shakira. Um, like I was telling the others who are on, um, she is doing an FSA one-to-one -one on some of the technical assistance that they have to offer. And she is not only a farmer, but she's also connected with the National Young Farmers Coalition. Um, so we're all doing this work together and our pieces of puzzles met and we get to have this beautiful recording today. So um, Shakira, I will give it to you, introduce yourself and go ahead with your presentation. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Tiffany, for the invitation. Um, as she mentioned, I'm a farmer. I'm from Texas. Well, I'm farming in Edinburgh, Texas, but I'm originally from Pensacola, Florida. And I have been a member of the National Young Farmers Coalition for four years. We had a local chapter in our area. So that's why I first started working with young farmers. But recently, they've been able to receive a a cooperative agreement to do outreach on FSA programs, specifically FSA loans. So that's my role with young farmers. I'm the technical assistant and just basically reaching out to farmers, letting um, everyone know that the programs are out there and making it easier to apply and um, providing the technical assistance so everyone can, can build and grow their farms. And I have a PowerPoint presentation for today that I'll share a little bit about my farm, how we were able to take advantage of the FSA programs and other programs that are out there to help you grow and expand your, your farm business. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Here. Okay, so a little bit of background about me and my, my farm. It's a family farm. We operated with um, a couple of part-time uh, help, but me and my family do quite a bit of the work ourselves. Uh, we have my husband who has the farming background. He has a, a master's in agriculture and, and soil science. And I myself personally, um, have a nursing background. And so I got into farming after I married my husband, not expecting to be a farmer, but I, I've grown to love it. And that's what I'm doing now uh, full time is, is farming. We started back in 2009 and we were growing slowly since, uh, since that time. We started growing in the back of our apartment building in an empty lot. And now, um, 10 years later, we have 20 acres of organic farmland um, that we have here. And our farm is really diverse. We've started doing mostly uh, farmer's markets. And then as we grew, we branched out into wholesale. And now we're doing uh, a mix of both, both of those. And like I mentioned before, we did start out very small, um, borrowing land from our neighbors. And we did a small short CSA with five, five members. We started off with used tractor and put a lot of work into getting it going, but that was our first major piece of equipment that we had um, to get started. And as we were growing, we took advantage of some other funding opportunities that at first, um, free money. We applied for a Young Farmer Grant. That's a program available here in Texas. I'm not sure if you have that in Kentucky, but if you do have any Young Farmer programs, I encourage you to reach out and take advantage of that. We started moving around to another location because with that grant, they gave us some funds to rent uh, land because we weren't uh, prepared to buy at that time. We were still pretty small. so. With that, we were able to rent and we had moved from the neighborhood lot to a friend's farm. And then eventually he had to expand his farming area. So we had to move again. And so in total, we had to move around about four times 
at that point, we had already grew our CSA to like 15 members, 20 members. And we had some good um, help. Volunteers were coming out and um, we were able to, we felt prepared to go and purchase our own land. We were afraid that if we kept growing on the rented property, we, we couldn't invest as much as we wanted to in the farm. We couldn't put up our tools there or the washing area. We were doing a lot of the washing in our backyard and making a way you know, to, to grow. But um, we decided at that point that it was time for us to actually look into buying our own land. And we had heard about FSA programs at a conference. Another farmer had applied and he was uh, actually farming out of his backyard and going to farmer's markets. And um, he was still able, eligible to get the FSA loan at that scale. So we felt comfortable. We were uh, motivated to go ahead and, and reach out and try for an FSA loan. This is an example of the markets we were going to. We we're doing our 20 boxes a week and we had about 100 members at one market and then 600 in another. Well, not members, but persons who attended the market. So there was a, a good um, market for our products. So when we applied through FSA, um, we were one of the few uh, beginning farmers, uh, black farmers that applied for their programs. We didn't um, encounter a lot of uh, I guess obstacles. Thankfully, we had a good loan officer who was willing to work with us at where we were at. We had to submit some paperwork, uh, quite a bit of paperwork that we actually had to compile ourselves with all of the data for our farming. And that was a bit of a challenge, just getting all the paperwork together. I wish we had that technical assistance that's available right now. But um, in 2012, we were able to get that FSA loan and it was a big um, help for our farm to get us going and moving. And we felt like we could invest in doing things better, more efficiently. So we started off with seven acres and they were able to help us with do several things uh, on that property. There was no power, no utility. So we, they helped us in, in getting that installed so that we could set up a small pack area and an area for coal storage. So we built out our own coal room using the coal bot system. So they also helped with the retention pond for irrigation and, and laying down some of the irrigation piping. And some of those things overlap with other FSA programs, well, with NRCS programs. So we got a equip contract, equip grant for a high tunnel. So with some of those, you have to pay in advance for the structures and then get reimbursed. So we did use some of our loan money for that, that too. So when, once we had all that in place, then we were able to grow from 20 members to 50 members in our CSA. We had the coal storage to store the produce and keep it fresh more than just like one day for the farmer's market. So we were able to start selling to school districts and um, wholesale in, uh, in Austin area. We were doing well uh, for several years and then we had an opportunity to purchase more property and someone from out of town had an empty lot and they were looking for someone to farm it organically. So they had found us online. We were doing pretty well at that, at that location where we were at, but we decided to take on this extra land more as, uh, for preservation of farmland because this is a highly developing area. Um, it's getting urbanized. So we approached FSA to try and get our loan through them for this um, farm where we're at, but they had a cap, like limits on how much we could borrow. So unfortunately at that time, we weren't able to finance through FSA, but they were able to help us put in some of the, the infrastructure that we needed on, on this property. So it was brush and we had to do a lot of cleaning um, 
a lot of debris, people started dumping. And so we had to do a lot of work our first initial years cleaning up. And then they were able to go in and do an assessment and we were able to get some help with NRCS to do land leveling and also to install the irrigation. Um, we got some grants and FSA help. We did a like this covered area for packing and washing and they were able to help us enclose that in. So we would have a, an area we could eventually get a uh, gap certified so they helped us with the pack and wash, also with equipment. We needed, since we had a bigger, larger area, we needed a better tractor. So they helped us with the tractor, um, some of the implements, the washing station, and also the refrigerated truck. So that you can get loans to finance uh, equipment as well and some uh, supplies. We also got help with the packaging too. And that was uh, really big when you scale up, we had to consider, you know, when we were selling in, in supermarkets, we had to get labels and branding and all of that was really pricey for us. And most places, if they're gonna make your label, um, they have a certain minimum for custom labels. So like hundred thousands of, 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 of labels. So FSA was helpful in, in getting those labels for us. So just some examples of how you can use the funding. Um, that's how we were able to use it, but there's a lot of different options I can share with you all. Uh, just to get started uh, talking about FSA and the loans, uh, you know, what do you have to do to be eligible? There is, um, uh, you do need to be farming for profit. I get that question a lot. So a lot of nonprofits are interested in uh, taking advantage, but unfortunately it has to be for profit family business. So you know, just to put that out there, you have to make sure that it's for um, a for profit farm and they require you to be a US citizen or resident alien, 18 years of age and not have any uh, federal convictions that would um, disqualify you from applying, and that would be growing any illegal substances, mostly is what they're concerned about. And have a business plan when you go to apply, they like to see a, a business plan of what your project is, what your expected costs and income is for the project, and have reasonable credit history. Okay, so uh, going back to the credit history, FSA, they provide loans for farmers who may have trouble getting credit elsewhere, like in a conventional uh, bank or, or lender. So they, they do have the requirement that you seek outside credit at first. And some of the offices may enforce this more than others, they might actually request a denial letter or you can just state the places where you've tried to get credit before. And for credit worthiness, they like to see if you have a payment, a good repayment history. So if you have any other previous loans or credit cards that you can show that you're making uh, regular payments on, it's, it's good. They will take into account, you know, if you had maybe like a loss of work or illness that prevented you from making regular payments. And if you have something showing up on your, on your report, they can take a look at that and you can present a statement just stating why you may have lapsed in your payments in the past. But they do try to, to work with you uh, on that. They do look at your credit score, but they're not gonna base their decision on the credit score. Okay, so to get into a little bit about the programs that are available, my farm, the one that we used was the microloans. That one's a little more accessible to beginning farmers. It's a shorter application process. 
It's uh, two pages, I believe. And there's a couple other additional forms, but it's a lot shorter. And you can borrow up to $50,000 for, for the microloans. And they separate their loans into two different categories. So there is the ownership loans. Those are for purchasing land or, or buildings, dwellings like homes. And then there's the operating loan that's used for equipment or annual expenses like seeds, equipment, labor, fertilizers. So the same things that are eligible under the operating loan and ownership loans, you can get with the micro loan and with a shorter application. So on the micro loans, the repayment term, the loans can be from one year to seven years, depending on what you borrow. If it's equipment, then you have a longer time to pay it back. If it's something that you're gonna just use one year, for example, seeds, then they'll be due a year after. And for operating loans, we can see you can use it for infrastructure. Uh, we used a micro operating loan to build those packing rooms, the wash areas. We used that one for the tractors and the refrigerated truck. And so there's a lot of different uses. And I like to point out here, you can use it for renting um, property for rent, for leasing land. You can use it also for family living expenses. If you have a record of, of that, you can submit for annual living expenses for the farm and also for labor. If you need just extra help on your farm to get you to where you need to be, if you're working also full-time, I would say that's a good, um, good use of the, the loan if you need for labor costs too. And so the maximum you can borrow for the operating loans is 400,000 and you have up to seven years to pay it back. And on the operating loans, they do require a, a little bit of collateral on those. And most of the times the equipment or whatever you're purchasing will serve as collateral. If it's something that's an annual cost though, you would have to have um, 150% collateral for those annual expenses like seeds or fertilizers. And moving to the ownership loans, the maximum you can borrow is 600,000. If you do have a property that you're interested in that's more than that, they do have um, different types of programs like a joint loan or a guaranteed loan or a down payment loan where they can help you um, fund part of the property if you can't, if it's more than 600,000. And I wish it was at that point before because I could have taken advantage of it prior. I think the, the cap was at 300,000. So it's great that it's, it's even up at 600,000 right now. The repayment terms um, says up to 25 years. They generally like to keep it around that, uh, that time, but you can repay it back in 30 years or even up to 40 years. Um, just depends on, on how your loan officer um, can work with you on that. But it can be extended to 30 or 40 on, on sometimes. So you can use those loans for purchasing land. Um, if it has a home on the property as well, it can be included in the ownership loan. Um, any type of uh, infrastructure like the wells, anything for conservation and for um, closing costs. So I didn't mention it before, but on these loans, there's no down payment. So you can actually enter the loan without putting anything down, which I think is a really great advantage of the FSA loan programs. Okay, so the interest rates on these loans, um, they are set every month. And they're pretty low compared to what you'll find at the commercial lenders. So you'll see they're at 2.75% and 3.25% right now. The joint financing ownership, that's the one I mentioned that if you find something that's above the 600,000, they, they have another program for that. 
or if you just, you're going to go through a commercial lender and you just need help uh, with the down payment on that loan, then the rate would be 1.5%. So these are good until April 1st. They do change every month. There has been a, a trend that they're increasing a quarter percent each month. So we be on the lookout for what the rates will be next month in May. Uh, they change monthly, but once you actually sign your, your loan, then it's gonna be fixed for the term. So, if you were to go and apply, you, you probably would end up with a different rate that's here because we're close to the end of the month. But it's just a guide so you can see where the rates are at. And these are available online. They're posted at uh, farmers.gov and you can go to their loans link and it'll show you what the rates are for the month. Okay, so let's see, what type of work will I have to complete? Paperwork. So uh, like I mentioned before, uh, there is quite a bit of paperwork with this and I'm here to help you uh, if you like assistance along the way. They will ask you for your business structure and contact information. You can apply as an individual or you can apply as an LLC or um, corporation. And then they'll at request your tax identification number, your three years financial history, your tax returns, if you have filed a Schedule F or any type of returns on your farming income. And they like to see what you've been growing to see if you have a history of uh, producing um, for the past three years. That's usually for the larger loans, the operating loan and ownership loans. And also three years management experience. And you can use experience from working on your own farm or someone else's. Um, on the other column, you can see they have different ways you can meet that three years managing experience. they are also request a business plan. You know, this is what I plan to grow on this area. This is my return I'm expecting. These are my expenses. So they'll do a um, cost analysis. And next they will request a list of your creditors, your debts and your assets um, for you individually. And if you're applying as an entity, they will request the same information for your entity. Uh, they will also take into account if you have income off the farm, if you're working outside of the farm, that can be used to show a, a source of repayment. So they'll know if your farm is struggling at first and you will have some way to pay back the loan. And if you're looking to purchase, they will request a purchase agreement if you're going to buy property. Uh, just to share a little bit about that, um, it's really important to try and secure your purchase agreement as soon as possible, if you're interested in a property, the FSA loans take about 60 days. So two months to go through all the paperwork could be longer. And you don't wanna have the, the risk of the property going under contract or being sold while you're waiting to hear back. So it's good to enter into the purchase agreement. And, Yes, so also if you're gonna go for the operating loan, they would like to see that you have a active lease uh, to know that you will have access to the farmland and know that you'll be able to repay the loan. So they might ask for your, your lease agreement if uh, you don't own your own property, if you're applying for the uh, operating loan. Okay, so a lot of this information you can find on farmers.gov slash loans. It's a very good resource. They have a tool there as a farm loan discovery tool. You can put in what you're looking to purchase with the farm, um, with the funds, and they will suggest different programs for you if you're better suited for the microloan or operating ownership loans. 
They have several different programs that I didn't mention here. Um, that's a food storage loan or a youth loan and guaranteed loans as well. So, okay, this is some information. My information is on the left. I'm sorry, I don't have the contact information for Kentucky, but if you reach out to me and let me know your county that you're farming in, I can call FSA for you to find out who's the best contact. So you can um, know who to reach out to for the your FSA office. Because sometimes your county might not be processing loan applications. They might source those out to another county. So that's what happened here in, in Texas. So. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I've talked a lot. I'll just open it up for any questions you have about the, the programs now. Thank you so much, Shakira. Um, I put the links in the chat if you might wanted to like copy and paste. Um, a couple of questions I wanna ask. Um, well, one, I wanna confirm, yes, we have regional offices. Like a lot of the things that happen in Madison County, um, we go to Lexington, which is like the biggest uh, city to us in the East. Um, and uh, they're really informative, even if, if you did have somebody in the county. Um, but my question is, do you have to be registered um, in the USDA.gov, that federal loan, um, like the portal that you actually go through to receive funding? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, so the, like you don't need to have when you say a farm, like farm number to apply? No, hold on. I'm going to look it up real quick. Okay. And if anybody else has a, a question before I find what I'm, I'm looking for, I should have been more prepared. I do apologize. I know for, for the grants, it is different, like grants.gov or sam.gov. You don't have to Sam. register through those. No. That's what I was asking, yes. So you do not have to be registered with SAM.gov. Thank you. That is exactly what I was looking for. Because <laughs> grants yes. and loans are um, serviced kind of differently. So that's something to know, though. So if you think you have to go through what you went through with your possible FSA grant or USDA grant, um, is what I meant to say, a USDA grant, it's different for FSA. Because I feel like some farmers have been... Um, burned or have been like misled or some one or two times it was just too much and so then they just discredit like a lot of other you know resources and I think reassuring folks that it's not as complicated as you might think it might be right yes it's they are trying to be more accessible open the the microloan program is a start it helps it's uh two pages and they try and squeeze as much information on there as possible, but it's a lot faster than doing the ownership or operating loan where they would request more information. Those, so you don't have to have those three years of production history or financials. So that's nice. And definitely encourage farmers to take advantage of the microloan program if they're just getting started. It's a really good, good option. And um, those are available. If, you, if anyone's interested in taking a look at those, they, like I mentioned, they're on farmers.gov. And also I could share, um, I try, try to share those links in the, in the chat so I can take advantage of it, just to review and see what they look like. Sounds good, sounds good. Does anybody else have any other questions before we, thoughts, question, comments, anything? Thank you also for lending yourself, even though you're not here in Kentucky, but because you have the experience, you know, if somebody gets hung up, um, you know, we can reach out to you. And since you've been through it already, you know, it's very helpful, appreciate that. Yes, yes. Uh, let me see if I can copy and paste this in here. Let's see if it'll work for me. Okay. Oh. 
Mm. Well, I'm having trouble uh, copying the the file in the chat, but well, if it's possible, uh, I can send that by email. Yeah, and I can send it out to um, okay. the group. Yes, for sure. That sounds great. So when I send this recording, the folks will have a resource as well with the information. Awesome. Well, I don't have anything else. I'm really glad that you did the slides. Like everything is so very informative and I appreciate you so very much. Um, I'm gonna end the recording for now.